Well, we do bias support in Sierra Leone since 2002, you know, soon after the uh, civil war finalized. And so for this fragile country and post-conflict country, it was very important to keep the core functions of the state running. And uh, so that was why we pro provided budget support to the country. Up till 2006, it was, uh, budget support was provided through bilateral channels. Each donor had its own set of you know, indicators and conditions to provide budget support. But since 2006, we have a coordinated approach among main donors. So that means uh, EU, DFID, uh, World Bank and African Development Bank. You know, we have a common policy, uh, policy dialogue framework and a common set of performance indicators that we measure to disburse funds. In the, in the context of the Ebola, the budget support has become now more and more important because what the Ebola crisis has done, it has actually destroyed um, the, more or less the economy. You know, all the key sectors of the economy have been disrupted, agriculture, mining, tourism, trade, in construction, and so on and so forth. And so the revenue base of, of government has been, has been is, 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 is now very, very, very narrow. You know, it was narrow before, now it's even narrower. And so the ability of government to raise enough revenue is even now more difficult. At the same time, government will have to deliver services as it used to be, in addition to the increase in expenditures for now Ebola-related activities. Even though the international community is helping, but government also has a key role so you can see that in, 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 in 2014, even after the supplementary budget, we thought the government would be in a position to be able to implement certain activities. All these activities have now been put on hold. And it's now been diverted to, to fight Ebola, both financial as well as um, human resources. So that combination of high expenditures and low domestic revenues is creating um, um, huge financing gaps, which, as you know, can only be filled by um, external um, concessional resources or, I mean, grants like um, budget support resources. If those resources are not available, then I'm afraid we'll go back to, to the situation of uh, macroeconomic instability and perhaps not only macroeconomic instability, but polit political and social instability. Our main challenges for a fragile country, well, um, they are also related to capacity building and mobilizing technical assistance without replacing the, the government, but really helping them implementing policies. But other challenges are mainly related to governance. Um, we have uh, achievements in terms of uh, public finance management, budget transparency, auditing, but we still have risks uh, on uh, of uh, you know of fraud and corruption, so which are you know it can be also be linked to weak weak capacities. Huh? So we we really need to uh, keep a dialogue on those issues and provide the necessary assistance to the country to avoid those risks. Another challenge I would say from the donor side is that we need to provide budget support on a timely and um, you know predictable manner so that the government can uh, program our resources into the budget uh, cycle. And this is an effort that donors have to do. The challenge before Ebola crisis was moving from a fragile situation where we support core reforms to uh, support better service delivery. And um, this needs to be done with uh, closer coordination with line ministries. Up till now, we were mainly working with the Minister of Finance, and we are now willing to include on our dialogue, um, you know, line ministries and um, include some indicators on sector policies, which remains a challenge. Well, as, as, EU, as even the EU noted in their report, uh, one of one challenge we have in moving from a fragile state to a more resilient economy is our capacity to mobilize domestic resources. Um, so far, it's improving, but it's very weak. And if you look at our revenue to GDP ratio, it's very low compared to even other fragile states in, 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 this, in, in the African, um, um, sub Saharan African, um, sub Saharan Africa. So that is one challenge we are facing. That's where we need also tremendous amount of support to help to improve tax administration issues so that our capacity to mobilize 
Public revenue um, um, can be improved. Um, related to that, of course, is the, the service delivery is very weak in all in all the social service delivery, health, education, water. You know, these are areas that are far far below even the, the average for Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, thirdly, infrastructure. Infrastructure is 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 is, is, is that our infrastructure deficit is huge. A lot of infrastructure challenges. Electricity supply is not only low but very unreliable. Um, roads, not to talk about roads. Um, this morning we are talking about um, an epicenter which is about 100 and over 120 miles from the the the, 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 the the main town of that particular district. So moving people from that particular part of the country that are sick to take them to the treatment centers, we have to cover about 120 miles. And this is not uh, of terrible road, not good road. So you can imagine what will happen to the to the sick people and of in fact to the vehicles. You know, some of the ambulances that have been provided by donors and also by the government, some of them have started breaking down just because of the roads. You know, so these are huge challenges. Sierra Leone is well below the, the list on the low income countries. You know, their GDP per capita is eight hundred dollars. We have uh, our, you know, social indicators are well below the average of all the sub-Saharan countries. You have, uh, you know, very weak access to uh, sanitation facilities, literacy is also only of 43 percent, absolute poverty is um, above 50 percent. It's maybe too early to provide uh, reliable data, but um, we already know that, uh, for instance, food security is uh, worse now than it was. You have like uh, some areas, some Ebola affected areas where rice prices have increased by 30 percent. You have farmers who've abandoned their farms, so there is a big impact. Those were challenges before as well, but more now. And um, in, in terms of education, for instance, schools are closed. Children are not going to school. We are right now finalizing our you know, strategy for the coming years. It's, going, it's about to be signed. Our main focus is on governance, as I told you, is one of the challenges for, for us. Education, uh, agriculture, which has a, a strong component in food security, and also infrastructure. So these were sectors identified before the Ebola crisis, but they, they are still relevant, uh, relevant after the Ebola crisis. What we are ensuring is that uh, as soon as the Ebola crisis uh, uh, you know, stops, uh, we can start as soon as possible with our cooperation portfolio. Well, at this point in, in, in time, given the situation that we are facing, basically from our point um, in terms of economic, um, all I could ask for now is, you know, more and more and more external support, whatever is available. You know, for us in the Ministry of Finance, I think budget support, whatever um, grants that are available, I think should be provided because the budget is actually facing a lot of problems. The minister read the budget on the 14th of November, and already people are complaining that the allocations to MDs, you know, MDs have started complaining that the allocations are, are not just not enough, which means service delivery next year, you know, will be, you know, just woeful. You know, and we are aware of this, but the resources are not there. And even the, the budget that is prepared, as you know, it has a financing gap. Now it's about $338 million, you know, 161 billion billion of financing gap. You know, if that gap is not filled, even under the best scenario of a low Ebola scenario, it means we have to further cut down, you know, those allocations. Maybe they're not enough. Imagine cutting them down again. The, you know, just... Um, compromise service delivery, growth prospects of the